Good morning, friends, and welcome back to NPTEL online certification course on public speaking. My dear friends, we have come a long way. And in this week, we shall be talking about interviews as forms of public speaking. Now, most of you might be thinking, can interviews also be a form of public speaking? And if so, why? Dear friends, whenever we speak in public, this is public speaking. So the moment we talk of interviews, many of us rather feel a sort of anxiety because most of us think about interviews only to be job interviews. But then one can come across interviews in different forms. Sometimes they know, sometimes they do not know. Interview passes off peacefully. One must remember the fact that interviews have become a part and parcel of human life today. Even in your personal life, as well as in your professional life, these interviews or the term interview has become quite common. How? Think of last time when you visited a school just to get your child admitted. You are asked that you have to appear at an interview along with a child. You wanted to buy a new house, a new car. You wanted to get a loan from the bank. You wanted to get something in return. And for that, you have to appear at interviews. Whether it is visiting a doctor, visiting a counselor, visiting the school principal, visiting the vice chancellor, or for that matter, visiting a minister, a leader. I mean, all these forms of face-to-face -face communication can be considered under the umbrella term of interviews. And that is why uh, today's lecture is titled Interviews. Now, from today onwards, we shall be talking about what interviews are, how interviews are different from everyday conversations, what are the objectives of interviews, what are the purposes, what are the prerequisites, what a person should do before the interview, during the interview and after the interview. But before we go into the details of interviews, let us try to understand how did this word interview come into origin and what is its background. The term interview has its origin in the French word intrevoy, intrevoy. And the meaning of this term is to see each other. Intrevoy. I mean the inner view of a person, the sight between that is called interview. It is actually a face to face communication and this often is conducted between the person who appears at the interview and the person or the group of persons who actually conduct the interview. The interview as a selection method or a rejection method employs an oral medium and what is this oral medium for? This oral medium is meant to evaluate, to examine the skill sets of candidates. You might well remember that when the first time you visited a school for getting your child admitted, not only the parents but the child also had to face an interview. And during that interview, other school authorities, they actually try to understand the home atmosphere. They also endeavor to understand the communicative abilities 
of the candidate along with their parents because they wanted to ensure that there ought to be a proper environment where the child can have his or her proper growth. Now, since interviews can be of different types, their natures may be different. So, depending upon the nature of interviews, the number of participants involved in an interview varies. Now, sometimes you may think of as here on the right hand side you can find it is actually an interview between two people. Perhaps they might be discussing some issue where only one person is needed, but there are times when you will find uh, that there can be more number of interviewers. So, the people who interview a candidate are interviewers and the person who actually is examined is an interviewee, fine. Now, you might be interested to know what actually are the purposes of interview, why interviews are taken, fine. So, if we have a look at one of the survey of a college of Los Angeles, uh, the CDC of Occidental College, I mean Career Development Center, it actually lists down certain criteria and it also says that there can be some purposes behind an interview. And what are these purposes? The purposes can be as a candidate, what are you going to offer? Fine. So, what are you going to offer? And these include your skills, your abilities, your basic knowledge and that is true of all sorts of interviews. Now, the interviewers also want to know what sort of person you are and for that also when we come to panel interviews we will talk about that, group interviews we will talk about that. So, who are you? What sort of personality do you have? What sort of character do you have? What are your interests? How much do you value the values? And then the last purpose is why should you be hired? In many interviews you might have uh, realized, especially sp in job interviews, they often ask you why you should be hired, fine. Actually, the interviewer there wants to know what are the positives in you. So, these three purposes are very important. They actually want to know your potential, your abilities. Now, as I have said in the beginning that there can be different types of interview. Now, you might also be interested to know what types of interview can there be, whether it is in your personal life or in your professional life. All of us are actually striving to succeed in our professional life, but that does not mean that we do not want to grow in our personal lives because we have certain responsibilities also and in order to fulfill those responsibilities, we at times also have to appear at certain interviews. Now, the very first is persuasive interview. I think there is no need to focus more on this term persuasive interview because it has got an element of persuasion. Maybe things go wrong, maybe some people want the other person uh, to understand something and for that they uh, conduct a sort of persuasive interview. Maybe they want to tell you about a new product they want to tell you about a new policy, how that has to be implemented and for that persuasive interview is very important. Then comes evaluation interview. A person is evaluated, evaluated on the performance of a project, on the performance of an experiment. So, for that also and such interviews are very shorter in length unless and until the situation so demands. Then comes conflict resolution interview. Once you enter a professional life, you might find that there has or have been at times some amount of conflict between two employees, between two people. There might have been 
at times some amount of miscommunication also which could have resulted into a sort of conflict. But in order to make our life go smoothly, we have to resolve these conflicts and for that we conduct a conflict resolution interview. Then comes job interview which most of you not only are looking forward to, but most of you also get nervous the moment they say or the moment you are told you have a job interview on such and such date. I think I have seen many people sweating at times only in the name of interviews. But my dear friends, interview is also a sort of conversation where the other party wants to know about certain set of skills from you. They actually want to understand your capabilities, your potentials as we have said. We shall have a detailed discussion on job interviews in some of uh, the coming lectures. Then nowadays, there has been a rise in another sort of interview where it is virtual interview. I mean when we talk about interviews, especially job interviews, maybe the job interview also has certain criteria. In several interviews you will find that there are several rounds, maybe sometimes they go for a screening one where because the number of applicants is too many, so they want to uh, uh, find out they actually want to segregate uh, the potential ones and there may be several rounds of interview for that. Nowadays, there has been a new trend of virtual interviews which does not cost much because interview in its physical form has to entail a lot of cost not only from the candidate's point of view but also from the organization point of view. And then once you are in a job my dear friends, at times you want to change your jobs, you want to shift your jobs for your own betterment and then when you resign, then there is another sort of interview that is called exit interview. Now as the term exit itself says that somebody is leaving an organization, but then the host organization wants to know what was lacking in our organization that has compelled a person to leave. So through this they also want to cull certain information, gather certain pieces of information, certain regions about the exit so that from the next time onwards and for the next candidate onwards they could be more conscious and they would be able to understand the gaps. Then there are counseling interviews at times you might have found uh, that something goes wrong, your son is not doing well, your daughter is not doing well and they have adapted different ways and means of spending their times. So for that you need a sort of counselling interview. Uh, in many competitive examinations also you can find that even after the results have been declared, the students are called for a sort of counselling. So through that they actually want to motivate and they want to boost their confidence and what not. Then comes disciplinary interview. You are working in a particular organization in a particular discipline and when you want to tell people about certain invaluable things of that discipline, you may call a disciplinary interview as well. Then there is termination interview, at times you know people have to be terminated, but before they are terminated they actually are called for an interview because no organization wants to leave a candidate and no one wants to leave an organization. But before anyone is terminated, uh, there can be a sort uh, interview which is called termination interview. And then another sort of interview is information gathering interview. Imagine you are conducting a research, uh, you have to gather data. And in order to gather data also, you may have to conduct certain interviews uh, through which uh, you apply different methodologies right from observation to telephonic interview to personal interview or uh, through questionnaires. So all these are done just for information gathering. Now you might also be eager to know that apart from all these types of interviews, and based upon uh, their nature, uh, the exigencies 
and the differences. Interviews may also vary in accordance to their physical setting, especially if the interview is to be conducted face to face, because whenever we talk about interviews, naturally in at the core of our mind, uh, we understand that it might be in a physical form. Of course, after the pandemic, uh, there has been an immense rise in virtual interviews, but even in virtual interviews also, you are to see people face to face. So, what actually uh, is an interview setup for all these? The very first is one on one interviews, I mean between two people, between two people. So, this is one on one interviews. Then there can be group interviews, some organization or uh, some startups, they are going to do something and for that they have sent a proposal and an interview is to be followed by, so maybe at times there can be a sort of group interview. Then there is panel interview in which there are people from different fields and there are more number of people in such interviews and this is called panel interview. Then in certain organizations, there is a meal time interview, which is a, a very informal sort of thing. You do not have the experience as if it is going to be an interview, where uh, the need and the expectation is to make the candidate very comfortable. Then as I have been saying that nowadays, in order to save time, money and in order to overcome the rigors of travel, Nowadays, there has been an increase in video conference interview. So, where much depends upon the technology because sometimes the glitches in technology may affect. And then on the job interview, once you are in the job and you are going to be elevated to a next position, then also there can be on the job interview and sometimes even uh, during a job or for a job there are stress interviews where you know some of the hidden qualities of a person are to be evaluated and for that uh, they will create a sort of situation where they will put you questions which appear to be very stressful but then as a person you have to prove yourself that you can come out of uh, such critical situations. So, this is called stress interview. Now, since we are going to be prepared for all sorts of interview, right from personal to professional, we need to remember certain points before we go to the interview and while we are during the interview and after the interview. So, now what is the first thing which is very important? The very first thing is one has to display, one has to prove self-confidence. My dear friends, a man loses or wins in the very first instance, if he is on a low confidence. So, one has to uh, display a proper confidence, then depending upon the subject and the nature, one needs to have a proper background information about the concerned area for which this interview is going to be conducted. One also must know if certain skills are required and for that you need to have an application of the acquired knowledge. You cannot or you must not simply apply for a job or appear an, at an interview where you are not yourself eligible because they require certain skill sets. Say for example, if it is uh, uh, an interview just to select candidates who can record these sessions, who can record online sessions. So, naturally a candidate for this will have to have certain requisite skills, not only the thing that one simply has an access to computers and all that one should simply apply. Actually, one has to understand the requisites and the expectations. Now, Another thing that is very important is environment. Most of us as I said some somewhere are uh, that the name interview itself 
actually makes you so anxious, you are in a fight or flight mode and why is it so? Because of the environment. So, one needs to that is why I have seen many people are going there beforehand just to acclimatize himself with the environment. Then try to understand the needs and expectations of the interview and then another thing that is very important because interview is a sort of formal communication one needs to uh, be quite formal and one needs to be very careful in terms of the use of language. As a candidate, one must understand one's strengths and weaknesses. And you know, on majority of the occasions, when you are going to introduce yourself, you can give them uh, a sort of hint about your strengths and weaknesses. It has always been said that even if you are going to talk about your weaknesses, please present your weaknesses as a sort of merit, even though. Uh, you are talking about a weakness, but you are presenting it in the form of a sort of a strength. Now, one must be very clear in terms of one's thoughts and expressions and on many occasions even during the interview, you are actually asked to take a decision immediately. Of course, taking decisions immediately is very challenging but it is your intelligence and your emotional intelligence rather that can help you uh, take a spontaneous and correct decision. Uh, you can refer to lecture on emotional intelligence which has already been delivered and you can get a lot of cues about that. Now, how original you are, fine, originality is always welcome. How innovative you are, what sort of a disposition or what sort of a mood do you possess? Are you always uh, in such a cheerful disposition that you can uh, create a sort of warmth uh, in the environment in which you are? I mean all these things actually add too much weight to uh, the potential of a candidate. Now, as I had been saying that there can be three phases of interview. The very first phase is called pre-interview phase, especially uh, for admissions, for uh, jobs. So, you will find that nowadays one gets quite a good number of applications. So, the very first round is a screening as I had been saying that there can be several rounds even in an interview. So, the very first is a screening of application. So, while you are going to send them your resume or CV or while you are going to fill up the form, please be quite careful, fine. Because once your uh, application has been screened, then your CV is to be appraised. Then people can have a look at your CV and depending upon your capabilities, depending upon uh, your achievements, attainments and all, then perhaps the next round is uh, the competency task and then the psychological task. Sometimes they also organize a sort of psychological task. For that also they provide you a sort of written psychological test because through that they want to assess or measure the candidates uh, psychological uh, you know uh, bearing or being. Now, now comes the interview phase after the screening interview is over some, sometimes depending upon what an organization needs and how many candidates they are trying to or tr uh, finding to recruit then you can find there can be another screening interview uh, uh, that has to be followed by uh, several other rounds of interview, maybe the first interview, then the second interview, then the third interview and then the final decision. Sometimes we find that one candidate has to go through different channels or different panels and finally, when the decision is to be taken that is actually by the most important person who will decide upon your fate. You might all be thinking that even when you have been screened, even when you have been called for an interview, whatever uh, be the type of the interview, how important is verbal communication during interviews, how you talk because interview is a form of conversation. It is a conversation between one person and the other person. It is a converse, it is a sort of interpersonal communication my dear friends 
where you may be one person and there may be another party who, which may comprise so many people. So, when you go for the interview, what is the first thing that you want to do or you should rather do is to greet everyone. Wait for the nod when you are going to be told to sit down and then the questions will follow, but before that they actually try to make you comfortable and you have to introduce yourself briefly, you actually have to showcase your strengths and now is the time that having set the ball, now they are going to ask questions, wait for the questions. Waiting always pays, fine, but while answering the questions, do not be very impatient, very excited. Listen carefully to the question, fine, do not interrupt in and between the question, fine. One has to deliver clear and concise answers without any digressions. It is also to be seen that while you are answering the questions, please try to avoid fillers. What do I mean by fillers? Sometimes you will find that many people have actually got a very bad habit of filling uh, their uh, empty hours with ah, uh, ums, uh, fine. So, there are certain lexical and non-lexical uh, things which actually are to be avoided. Whatever you speak, when you speak a sentence, be sure that it is grammatically correct. Do not bring any informal use of word because this is a formal situation by different and every now and then you must be ready to answer with a formal sense of dignity, discipline and humor. Even if verbal communication is important, non-verbal communication is also important. We have already talked about what are the non-verbal cues that one can display uh, during a public speaking situation. The very first thing is care for your dress, care for your bearing, fine. In certain conditions, you can always be given a chance to shake hands uh, with the interviewer and then throughout the interview maintain eye contact because the interviewers are always ready to bounce upon you, uh, but then you need to maintain the patience and you need to establish the rapport while talking to one person establish the eye contact and maybe that another person pours in a question, but then you are not to lose your patience my dear friend. Please try to bring a smile on your face and this a smile should actually express a sort of positivism throughout and a confident posture. It has at times been seen that when a person feels quite uneasy, one starts changing one's uh, position too often even while sitting in a chair. I mean they start squirming, I mean they start making unnecessary movements and that actually in a way is the direction or the hint that you are quite nervous. Then comes personality test. During personality test, there are certain sets of questions that are being asked in order to measure your human skills. Now, what are these human skills that at times can be tested? The very first is empathy, compassion, motivating fellow employees, decision making, leadership, all these actually come under the term as human skills. Now, if you have all these uh, things into consideration, then perhaps you are ready. But one thing that one needs to be quite aware of is what could be the advantages and disadvantages of interviews. Because uh, in just say a 20 minute or a 30 minute interview, not everything about you can be measured. That is why at times even good people are not able to succeed. Even good people are not able to perform better. So, it is always better if we can understand uh, the advantages and the disadvantages beforehand. Now, the advantages are that there is a personal and deep approach. An interview has to be structured, but then it can be adaptable. I mean only experienced people can say how they can bring the interviewers back to their subject area. There are chances that you can improvise even during that uh, short period of time if you are conscious throughout. Questions can be explained better, but see to it 
that at times there can be interruptions, fine. One has to ensure that an interview uh, in a way is advantageous because it allows you to have a proper outlook towards your nonverbal communication. I mean your behavior is also gauged throughout. Then there are disadvantages because if physical interview is arranged, it actually entails a lot of cost, fine. So many people are to be brought from different corners of the country or the world uh, from different disciplines. At times there is also scope for misinterpretation. But one thing is very important during these uh, uh, 20 or 30 minutes, it at times becomes very difficult to allow a, a person or a group of persons to know about your soft skills and your behavioral skills. And then one thing uh, which is very detrimental is the bias of the interviewers. So, this bias is actually a very harmful. Now, at times it has happened that many of the traditional interviews have failed. Here you can get a sort of data about why and where uh, traditional interviews have failed. I mean uh, they are not able to, these traditional interviews are not able to assess uh, the candidates soft skills. Uh, then their weaknesses are also not in a position to be measured. Of course, bias as I have been saying, bias is quite detrimental and sometimes because the several rounds of interview that can at times become very irritating and it has also been seen, I mean 18 percent of people have responded saying uh, that they perhaps do not know the best questions which could be asked and the prospective candidate can be selected. Now when we talk about the interview bias it actually appears and occurs maybe because of some personal regions, because of certain interests, because of the interest of the organization, because of the preference of the organization and uh, there are certain regions behind it. If there is a stereotypical mindset, again that is not going to work. Sometimes the nonverbal cues are also misinterpreted. If uh, uh, there is no proper hints available, then sometimes also because of cultural differences uh, it can be hampered and then the very first impression when the candidate enters the board room, uh, that first impression if it continues for a long time that may also give rise to a sort of bias. Now such biases have to be avoided uh, by approaching all the interviews with the same set of approaches, but this does not happen by different, there are different questions for different people fine and employing fact based or objective interview session can also help to reduce this interview bias. Now uh, here we can take one very beautiful quote uh, by an American uh, gymnast uh, Laurie Hernandez who says, I want to make sure I always show off my smile and have a positive attitude. My dear friends, as a prospective candidates, you also should encast these two uh, qualities. I mean your smile, but do not smile frequently and one must have a positive attitude uh, throughout the interview. So, what this gymnast says is, I want to make sure I always show off my smile and have a positive attitude the whole time, whether it is during a performance, practice or doing an interview. So, I think all of you must keep all these things into consideration and then if you feel that you have been able to arm you yourself with all uh, these qualities, merits, dispositions uh, and all, then perhaps you are the candidate for which an organization is waiting. So, before uh, we come to wind up this session, let me take a quote uh, by a very famous personality uh, named Alexander uh, Graham Bell who had invented telephone and what he says is an eye opener. When one door closes, another opens, but we often look so long and so regretfully upon the closed door that we do not see the one which has opened for us. What is the implication? That one never needs to get anxious when something does not work, rather one needs to have an optimistic outlook uh, and that is why uh, Graham Bell says that most of the time we concentrate on the door that is closed and we do not look for the door which actually is open for us. 
there is always an opportunity waiting for all of you. Please try to encast this, that opportunity, but with proper set of skills and proper capabilities. With this, we end this session. Thank you very much. I wish you all a good luck for your interview. Thank you.